Welcome to a new fragrance review. Today we're going to try Burberry Brit. So I got a nice little bottle of the fragrance. Nothing much to show. I always have that little squared pattern on every of the fragrance, or not every of them, but most of them. Here's the box. And it comes with a sleeve. And if usually a sleeve like this is a sign that it's a fake fragrance, not necessarily for Burberry, but for brands, when you see a sleeve like this, it's a fake. But where I got it, it's obviously a real fragrance. It's like they get it straight from the company. It wasn't special, but uh, I got it from like a, an actual retailer. And that's it, nothing much to show. So let's try the smell. So as I'm spraying it, I need to tell you that this fragrance, once I did, I don't know which fragrance, I think it was Zino by Davida, but could have been another one, but I'm pretty sure it's Zino by Davida. And I asked which is a great rose fragrance, and it was there in a couple of comments. So I was trying to find it, it was hard, finished to find it, and now as I'm spraying it on the paper, it's powdery bit rosy, especially powdery. It smells, I would say, maybe a little bit like feminine powder. There's something like that. Not like the barbershop powdery, but more like almost makeup. Well, not quite, but almost. And that's all that I'm picking up in the air. Projection is a bit better than I expected. Other than those powdery note and that rose note, picking up some ginger. A lot of like spiciness in that fragrance, but more like in the background but there's a lot of spiciness. I'm taking out a lot, like a medium amount of nutmeg. Say so ginger and nutmeg are the most dominant spicy notes. I'm picking up some citrus note. It's hard to describe. I would say more like mandarin and bergamot. More mandarin, maybe a bit of bergamot, but it's more like um, leaning toward like orange type of citrus, just citrus note not really easy to pinpoint anything, at least not on paper. Pretty much all I'm picking up on paper. I would say the powderiness and the rose really overcome everything else. So it's hard to pick up anything other than those notes. So on my skin, what I'm picking up, it's still a really powdery fragrance. I'm picking up a lot of rose and a lot of ginger. This is the two most dominant notes that I'm picking up. Picking up also a lot of like spicy notes in general and also a lot of cardamom. Picking up a little bit of cedar, a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of tonka bean and a little bit of mandarin orange. And on my skin, it's more specifically mandarin orange, you know, what I'm picking up then just some citrus note that is hard to describe. As it dries down, still picking up a lot of rose. And at that point, I'm picking up also a lot of nutmeg that start to appear. Still a lot of like spicy note that is not necessarily describable and still powdery note. I see that there's a musk note and I would say that I'm probably picking up some musk as in the powderiness, but it's nothing that's really specifically musk like as a note. It's probably some aroma chemical in like the musk category that created this. In the base note, I'm picking up a little bit of tonka bean, a little bit of cedar. At that point, I'm not picking any more rose. I'm picking up like some cedar, but it's more like kind of cedar, maybe some Izoe Super or some other woody note. I'm picking up some woody note that I cannot really describe too. Picking up a lot of spicy notes and a little bit, but kind of musk from the powderiness. I'm not quite sure what is the accord that they make to do that heavy powdery, but it's, I'm saying it's a lot, but it's really, really a powdery fragrance. If you like things that are powdery, you'll like this one. If you like rose, you'll like this one. And farther in the dry down, and picking up mostly tonka bean. Projection of the fragrance is good, but like average, maybe a high average. A little bubble around me, people were able to pick it up, but still like almost an extended bubble. It's like at arm length, but maybe just a little bit farther than arm length. People were able to smell it. Longevity of the fragrance is really good. It lasted more than 12 hours. The projection was not like crazy in longevity. It was like, average, I would say, for the longevity of the projection, but longevity like as a skin scent was really good. And the fragrance also itself, I think it was a really nice fragrance. It smells good. It's a special fragrance. And if you want something that's 
rosy for man that's a good one and it's not something that i said that it smells like feminine powder or like whatever like that in the beginning but this is what i'm picking up on paper and on my skin it was not occurring to me as being feminine at all at the opposite i felt that it was really masculine for a rose it felt more like a barbershop fragrance and usually I'll, i enjoy the note of rose i think it smells good and i have stuff like aramis 900 for example and there's always something that i feel it's a bit feminine when there is a note of rose and it's just my personal opinion and i didn't have that with this one so it was nice Complete note breakdown for the fragrance. Step notes are ginger, cardamom, green mandarin, and bergamot. Heart notes are rose, nutmeg, cedar, and a spicy note. And a base note, I'm gonna read what's written in Fragrantica. I'm doing that disclaimer because there's some weird notes written there. So there's tonka bean, cedar, gray musk, oriental woody note, and fetchu. I don't know what oriental woody note is, but there's like some woody notes. And gray musk actually doesn't mean it anything. Because black musk is musk that comes from an animal, white musk is musk that doesn't come from an animal, and gray would be like a mix of both. I don't know. And I, from the price, I highly doubt there's real animalic musk in the fragrance. So where I would see the fragrance as a barbershop fragrance, it's really elegant, especially this fragrance is extremely elegant. It's something that I would see someone wearing. You could wear it with pretty much anything that you would wear a barbershop fragrance with, but I would see this being worn with like a tuxedo or something like that, some, something that's really elegant with a suit. It would be really great as a business fragrance, as an elegant fragrance. Also, I think it's really different from other fragrance and it distinguishes itself a lot. Pretty much the fact that there's rose, it helps because it's somewhat of a rare note in men's fragrance. Also, I forgot with the description that I had someone telling me that it smelled like Paco Rabanne pour homme, even though personally, I don't think it smells like it at all. Uh, to keep going with uh, where I would see the fragrance, as a dating fragrance, I don't think it will be there. It's not that type of fragrance. Wouldn't do quite a good job for that. Wouldn't be necessarily bad, but it's not that type of fragrance at all. Though it will be workable, especially if you're gonna go on a, a date that is somewhat elegant, like if you need to the shark. Winter, summer spectrum, I would say it's pretty much in the middle. Even the smell, I would say it's really neutral as seasonality. It's not something I would see more in summer, more in winter. It will fit pretty much where every usual barbershop fragrance belong, even though I'm calling it a lot like a barbershop fragrance, but I would say that it's, for some people, might not fit in that category quite powderiness that puts it in that broad category for me. And as an everyday scent, it will do a good job. I think uh, the fact that it lasts a long time, that it smells nice and clean, the little powderiness in there, almost barbershop fragrance, would do a good job as an everyday fragrance, lasts the whole day, it's cheap. There's everything you need in an everyday fragrance in this, so it will be doing a great job. So where we see the most, it's business scent as something elegant or maybe some special occasion where you need to dress up or as an everyday scent. It's actually really versatile, even though it's extremely unique and different from usual fragrance. Um, I think it's special that it really like fits a lot of gaps and at the same time be really unique. I'm really surprised about it. If I would put a, like a top uh, Burberry fragrance, that would probably be my number one. I really like it. It's great display of rose and powderiness. It's not one of the fragrances that is the most seen by the brand, but definitely it's something that people will need to try, especially if you're a bit daring, you want something special, something that's not like the same thing that everyone has, something you should try. So, hope you enjoyed the video. If it's the case, well, like and share. If you try this fragrance, tell me what you think about it. Also, if you're a fan of Burberry, tell me what are your favorite fragrance. I've tried a couple of them and 
who knows, maybe there's some less known fragrance that are great, then I should give it a try. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Thank you.